In our previous video, we concluded by establishing the derivation, the origin of Mendel's two very famous ratios based off of a monohybrid cross. We came up with the two ratios of 1 to 2 to 1, and that was of course our genotypic ratio, and a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio if we have a monohybrid cross. We're going to continue our discussion on Mendel's model and entitle this next flowchart Mendel's Model 3. Mendel's model three, but this time we're going to look at a different cross. So we've done a monohybrid cross, and the monohybrid cross gave us those very famous phenotypic and genotypic ratios. In this next cross, it's going to be we're going to be looking at the term or sort of the thing that Mendel did known as a test cross. A test cross is a very useful, incredibly useful genetic tool that helps us look at and understand the genotypes of let's say unknown individuals. So, what we can state about a test cross, sort of simply, is that it is used to identify genotype. Used to identify genotype. But more specifically, used to identify genotype of a dominant phenotype. What do I mean by this? Well, if you imagine, let's say, a green flower. Let's say you see a green flower. This is the, the sort of notation that we've been using, and I'll continue using it. So you see a green flower outside, and you know that the idea of um, G being dominant to lowercase g, this means that if you have any one of these alleles, you will be green, and then if you have two of these alleles, you will be yellow, right? So yellow is recessive to green, and green is dominant to yellow. Let's say you see a green flower. How do you possibly know whether or not it's capital G, capital G, or capital G, lowercase g. How can you possibly tell? Because you can't see the genes. You can't see which alleles this green flower has. You can only see that it's green. You can only see the phenotype. You can only see the dominant phenotype. So how do you figure out what genotype? is present, capital G, capital G, or capital G, lowercase g. Well, what you do is you use a test cross. This is a test to see which one of these is the dominant phenotype that you're observing. More specifically, in this process, what we're going to do is we're going to mate the individual with the dominant phenotype, so that flower that you see, that green flower. You don't know if it's capital G, capital G, or capital G, lowercase g. You're going to mate that individual with dominant phenotype to an individual, this is actually what Mendel did, to an individual who expresses, who shows, who physically shows a recessive phenotype. Well, why do you want to mate it with a recessive phenotype? How are you so confident that you know that something's a recessive phenotype? So you ask yourself, why did Mendel do this? Why would you do this? Why is this part of the test cross? Because we know for a fact 110% that any recessive genotype in terms of this plant color that we established here, the recessive genotype is always, 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 always going to be lowercase g, lowercase g. That's just a fact. You can only have a recessive phenotype. You can only have, let's say, a yellow flower if you have two recessive alleles being expressed. And in addition, what we can say is that the recessive pheno, just to drive home this point, the recessive geno is always cap lowercase g, lowercase g, and the recessive pheno is always, always, always yellow. Yellow, and we're going to write always. These are facts that you absolutely know, so why not extrapolate on these facts? Why not deduce information based off of this? So let's think about it. Let's actually do the cross now. Let's do the cross uh, on the bottom here. So I'm going to sort of portion out the rest of this space for two different crosses. I'm going to now, I have to mate an individual with dominant phenotype with individual who expresses recessive phenotype. So I'm going to do over here something called test cross one because there are actually two options for this test cross. And over here we'll do test cross two. So test cross two. Why are we doing two? Well, we're doing two because one, you can say that you're going to assume that it's either going to be capital G, capital G, or your hypothesis in the beginning will be that it's capital G, lowercase g. This is your assumption. So we're going to write assumption. 
So you assume that it's either that or that, because you have two options based off of the, your assumption. You know that it's green, but you don't know what type of genotype green it is. So that's the first assumption that you make in both of these. Oh, this should actually be a letter number one. So you make that assumption on both test crosses. What you're going to do now is, what's the step here? May individual with dominant phenotype, check, check, with individual who expresses recessive phenotype. So guess what? Now we're going to do the same thing on both ends. Cross with GG. And I'm going to write the same thing. Cross with lowercase g, lowercase g. So let's see what we get. Let's do a basic Punnett square for this guy. This guy is going to be capital G, capital G. This is coming from one individual, two gametes possibility. And the other gamete possibilities from that known yellow individual are lowercase g, lowercase g. Now you just create a Punnett square such as this. And what we can do now, very simply, is cross multiply. So we get GG, GG, we get another GG, and another GG. Everybody understand how I did that? Capital G times lowercase g will get us GG, capital G, lowercase g. Same thing for every single one. Very interesting. You're getting the same exact thing. Do you know what this means overall? You're actually, when you look at the offspring of this first test cross, what are you going to notice? Every single offspring is going to look what? Exactly the same. If all green, if you notice all your offspring are green, you were right. Meaning that your assumption that the plant that you're looking at, that green plant that you're looking at, is capital G, capital G, the only way you can affirm this assumption is to do a cross with a lowercase g, lowercase g individual, a yellow individual. So we can write over here yellow, um, sort of just to remind ourselves that this person right here who has this orientation is yellow, and this guy is obviously green. If all of the kids, all of the offspring are green, you were right, because you were sure that this dominant, double dominant, hetero homozygous dominant genotype shows itself up in the next generation as heterozygotes throughout. Let's look at the converse, the opposite. Let's look at the other situation. Let's say your assumption was this. It was capital G, lowercase g. And then you had lowercase g, lowercase g. Let's do the same exact thing. Let's do a punnett square, a cross. Let's imagine what the individuals look like in this situation. So one offspring is going to look like that, one is going to look like that, one is going to look like that, and one is going to look like, oops, let me actually do this one over, I made a mistake. One is going to look like that, and one is going to look like that. Now, what you notice, let's say, in this next one is, let's say you guessed your green plant was heterozygous. How do you confirm your guess? How do you know if you're right? Well, if one half of your offspring are green, this guy's going to be green, this guy's going to be green, right? Because there's a dominant allele and a dominant allele there. Plus, one half are going to be yellow, right? This guy's going to be yellow, two lowercase letters, two lowercase letters, another half yellow. What can you say? Then you were right. This is a test cross. A test cross is simply figuring out whether or not it's capital G, capital G, or G, capital G, lowercase g. Am I looking at a dominant phenotype that is heterozygous or homozygous? And I can do that through these two different test crosses that we've done. If you get either of these two results and you've made this assumption first, then you know for a fact that you were right. And let's say you were wrong, then you know the actual genotype because let's say you assumed it was capital G, lowercase g in this test cross one and you got all green. That means you know for a fact that it couldn't have been this because you were expecting half green, half yellow. If you see all green, you know that you were wrong and that it has to be capital G, capital G. So that's Mendel's test cross.